Okay, we'll call to order the Finance and Purchasing Committee for August 19th, 2019. The time is now 511. Roll call, please. Alderman Moisio? Here. Alderman Kirkwood? Here. Alderman Rivera? Present. Alderman Seeger? Present. Alderman Newsom? Present. Uh, approval of minutes. Take a motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Moisio to approve the minutes as shown for August 5th Finance and Purchasing Committee. Are there any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, public comment. Is there anyone that wants to speak to anything on the Finance and Purchasing Committee agenda? Seeing none, new business. Item A, motion to approve the award of a contract to P&H Cinesac Incorporate, the lowest qualified bidder relative to water plant sludge, dewatering, and disposal in the amount of $132,762 for each of the 2019-2020 and for 2020 and 2021 fiscal years for a grand total of $265 thousand five hundred and twenty four dollars this is um, something that we do okay the water plant had a bid opening on July 30th 2019 and the attached is a recommendation for the highlighted low qualified bidder PH Cinesac Incorporate uh, for fiscal year 2019, 2020, and for 2020 and 2021. This was for a two year bid. Uh, uh, can you, Mr. Hewitt, can you speak to that? We do a, a dredging of the, is this dredging for the harbor, right? No, the plant. Oh, the, well, the, the plant water plant. The water yeah. plant. Yeah. yeah, it's out there by the harbor. <laughs> it is by the harbor, though. I'm not sure, is that like, is that like the way? We're in trouble. Maybe we shouldn't be <laughs> right. <laughs> Talk about the harbor and everything. <laughs> Here, how are we going to jump? Oh, young lady, whatever. I try. You do. Thank you. All right, on the de sludging, what it is is basically. The remainder, when we filter out the water, it goes into a special tank. And what happens is, after a while, it gets, it's like sludge uh, debris from the lake. And what happens is, as it builds up, the closer it gets to the top, the harder it is to fill water, which means it slows down the water filtering process. So these come in. And we, what happened was, over the years, uh, the predecessor to the current person at the plant went like four or five years and my predecessor decided they didn't want to do it or whatever. So we're trying to get into a regular scheduling of it, which means everything runs more efficiently. The filters have less backup and it's just something we should have been doing every year. All right. And we felt a two year contract would catch us up rather than coming back every year. And they're one of the only companies that does it. So, all right. Thank you, Mr. Hewitt. Any more questions? That motion is by uh, Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Moisio. Any questions on the motion? Roll call. Alderman Moisio? Yes. Alderman Kirkwood? Yes. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item B, motion to grant an exception to the competitive bidding process pursuant to section 2-458, subsection I-3, Government Joint Purchasing Act, and approve the award of a contract to Burris Equipment in the amount of $120,510.30 for the purchase of a water department backhoe. This project utilizes 2018 seawater and sewer bond funds. Motion by Alderman Kirkwood. Second by Alderman Rivera. Are there any questions on this motion? Can I ask a question? Yes. I'm not on the committee. But Alderman Taylor. Yes. What do we need a backhoe for the water plant? I don't. 
This, for, I, I don't understand. It's not at the water plant. This it's for it's it's under the water plant or water fund. Okay. But what it's for is basically for the uh, water department in whole. So that's for breaking out and working on water mains and such. Okay. okay. So it'd be mostly utilized by the public huh? works, right? Right. So Alderman Taylor in the water fund, there's kind of three primary areas. There's the water plant, then there's water main, which is under Mike, and that's anything that's under the road, so water, sewer, stormwater, and then there's water collections. Okay. So this is actually for the water main division, even though it's coming out of the water sewer okay. fund. That's so I, public I works. Okay. 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 But I wanted to clarify. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions on the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Kirkwood? Yes. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item C, motion to approve the award of a contract to Capanilla and Sons, the lowest qualified bidder, relative to the demolition of a structure in order to make stormwater improvements in an amount of $127,365. This project utilizes 2018 seawater and sewer fund, sewer bond funds. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Seeger. Are there any questions to I this? Have, I have one, Madam Chairman. Where, where is the structure? It it's is on um, Circle Drive. 1701 Circle Court. And this is the one that um, the city took ownership of. The garage was built over. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. So we're taking it down. The city took ownership of it, purchased it. Yes, and then we're taking it down, the house and the garage. That also includes the and drainage. We, drainage issues as well going down and back sloping and taking care of. That's why it's higher than just taking a house down. Okay. And we'll never sell that property, right? There may be a portion of it we might be able to divide eventually as long as we have the easement to go back for the drainage. That was the problem. What happened was... Underneath the garage was our was a storm drain, mm -hmm. and it started collapsing in pieces. So it was underneath the garage. So we had to do something with it, and it was taking out the bank of the ravine. So. And that was like an un unpermitted garage, I believe. Yeah, well, we are right. not sure. We couldn't find anything for it. Couldn't, so. couldn't find a permit to, to build the garage. <laughs> yeah, right over, and it, there was a manhole in the center of the garage they car put concrete over. So, yeah, it was interesting. Any more questions on this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item D, motion to grant an exception to the competitive bidding process pursuant to section 2-458, subsection I, uh, subsection 3, Government Joint Purchasing Act, and approve the award of a contract to Sutton Ford in the amount of $148,019 for the purchase of a water department truck. This project utilizes the 2018 seawater and sewer bond funds. Uh, are there any questions to this motion? I, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, will this be replacing another truck or are we just adding to the fleet? What this will be is basically a maintenance truck and they'll be using it uh, from the uh, maintenance department for the vehicles as well. So, and it's going, to, it's going to have a crane for removal of, it's, you know, something sorely needed. Okay. And the other one, I think eventually they will get rid of. So, all right. It's going to take a while to get the truck too. Okay. It's going to take a while? Yeah. Do you know how long? Probably, they said they may have one in stock as far as the chassis goes, but they have add-ons to it. So they have to probably, actually build yeah. it? Yeah, well, the chassis is there, but the rest of it has to be built, yeah. So. Okay. Right. That's it, it, the fun part about it. If we order it now, it could take six months to get. Like the last one we got for the water department, which took like a year and a half or something. Mm -hmm. it's like, and, and this is for a, a crane, you said? Well, what's a, what the, it's a service truck for the maintenance department, for a motor pool, basically, to mm -hmm. service their trucks and everyone else, so. And they put a crane on. We don't have one with a, on a truck right now currently. And when we're moving pumps and some of the pumps that are in the different plants and stuff, we thought it would be, it would help out quite a bit. As long as we're doing it, let's do it right. Okay. Take the motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Kirkwood. Are there any more questions on this motion? Roll call, roll call please. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. 
Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Motion to grant a good faith waiver to the competitive bidding process pursuant to section 2-458 subsection I-7 and approve the award of a contract to Burris Equipment in order to make a vehicle and equipment parts purchase as necessary during the 2019-2020 fiscal year for not, for not to exceed amount of $45,000. Uh, motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Rivera. Um, council requests permission to approve expenditures in excess of 25,000 with Burris equipment and also a good faith waiver. It is estimated that an approximate total uh, 45,000 may be spent with burst equipment for parts equipment and rentals of, as there are multiple departments that use burst equipment as a vendor for parts equipment and rentals. Um, are there any questions on this motion? Roll call please. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Item F. Motion to grant a good faith waiver to the competitive bidding process pursuant to section 2-458 subsection I-7 and approve the award of a contract to Thielen Materials in order to make sand and material purchases as necessary during the 2019-2020 fiscal year for a not to exceed amount of $45,000. Our, uh, motion by Alderman um, S motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Kirkwood. Alderman Taylor. Yes. Um, I know there's a good reason here, but I'm looking at this as a resident would read this. Why is there um, a waiver to, for the bidding process for sand? There's got to be a special sand, I know, right? So yeah, it's for the beach. It. And what happened was we acquired the sand a year ago, the same sand. So we're trying to keep the same vendor because remember the problems we've had with the beach in the past, I didn't want to go and start changing and maybe something a little different. So we're using the exact same. And I will say we've been very fortunate uh, with some of the proactive things we've done by not going crazy with filling the beach. So we have like a hump and then a little undulation, so to speak. So by doing that, uh, unlike the city of Chicago and all of the other beaches along the lake, we didn't lose ours. So we've been very fortunate. But this gives me the ability to, if needed, be able to add, add sand to the beach. All right. I knew there was a, a reason. I and just I'm trying, I, to I'm understand what the reason really is. trying to keep it the same. All right. And it's one of the only places that there's a sand and gravel pit around. Yeah. So. Any more questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item G, motion to approve the award of a contract to Kluber Architects and Engineers following a request for proposals process relative to City Hall, Public Works, and the police station. And I think this should be amended to include fire. Fire. As well fire station facilities, improvement project oversight, an amount not to exceed $160,000. This project utilizes 2018 BGO bond funds. Motion by Alderman Moisio. Yeah. Second by Alderman Seeger. Are there any questions on this motion? I have uh, Katie that was working with this here if you have any questions. Being none, roll call. Is this a uh, roll call on a motion to amend? Oh, okay, first of all, yeah. Motion to amend to include um, fire, fire station. Do we know which ones? Or we just I'm not different? Sure. Uh, Okay. And Fire Station 3. Mr. Long, can we do a voice vote to amend the motion? Fire can Station know, 3. Can we know so that? Should we do the, can we do the voice, the voice Amendment vote votes. to amend the motion first? Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Um, 
you have a question on uh, yeah prepared. has the work already started no we no won't, we won't be able to start until we go through with hiring this okay group. and this is for inside the facilities um primarily yes okay uh, the only reason I'm asking is because I did see some work being uh, being done at one of the fire stations and it was like tuck pointing, so that was probably something else. Yeah, the tuck pointing is not related to what they'd like to use their money on. Um, currently, the tentative proposal is for Station 3, subject to change depending on the amount of the cost for the project that they're looking at. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any more questions? Yeah. Alderman Seeger. Alderman Seeger. Is it a big project? Or the one for Station 3? Yes. The proposed project is significant, yes. Any more questions? Roll call. Do you want to oh. the same person second? Uh, motion. Alderman uh, Kirkwood. Where is Walker uh, Fire Station 3? By Weissfield. By Weissfield. I thought so. On Lewis Avenue. The oldest Thank one. You. The oldest, yeah. The oldest yes, fire station. Alderman Kirkwood. Now, this uh, project, is it going to sustain that fire station for an extended period of time, or are we going to be coming back later on to do more expansion in that particular station? Because it's one of our older stations. So I want to make sure we're not just putting money money into a situation and we have to turn around and redo some other things because of the location and that it's kind of landlocked. So the concentration is for an immediate need. If we have the ability to expand farther on this project, we would like to do so, but we're also looking at the cost being a prohibiting factor on the larger scale of what they'd like to do. So, so each, go ahead. No. It's my understanding that the neighbor does not want to sell. It's my understanding that the neighboring properties do not want to sell. To sell. Same. Um, are you finished, Alderman Moisio? Yeah. Okay. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Seeger, to uh, approve. Motion to approve the award of a contract to Kluber Architects and Engineers following a request for proposals process relative to City Hall, Public Works, Police Station, and Fire Station 3. Uh, improvement projects oversight and amount not to exceed $160,000. Fire, just, just fire regular fire, fire, okay, fire station, fire department. Okay, roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item F, I mean H, motion to authorize the proper city officials to execute grant agreement with the Department of Justice and further to enter into a related um, memorandum of understanding between the City of Waukegan County of Lake and the City of Zion relative to the 2019 Burn Justice Assistance Grant. JAG program, excuse me, program. Motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Kirkwood. And this is a grant we get every year. Yes. Are there any questions on this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item I, 
Motion to authorize the proper city officials to execute grant agreement with Illinois Department of Transportation for 2020 step grant for highway safety purposes. Motion by Alderman Seeger, second by Alderman Kirkwood. Are there any questions to this motion? Seeing none, roll call please. Alderman Moisius? Aye. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Item J. Motion to retain Johnson Consulting to provide developer submission revenue and review and advisory services for the 2019-2020 fiscal year for a total retainer of $45,000 plus reasonable out-of-pocket expenses. Motion by Alderman um, Moisio. Uh, second by Alderman Seeger. Are there any questions on this motion? I have one, but I'm not on the committee. Alderman, Alderman Taylor. Um, did we send this out for bid? Sure. Did we send this out for bid at all? Okay, so we are not asking for a waiver in the motion. Do we have to amend that then? No, these are professional services that are exempt from the bidding process. Okay. I have a question too. This is a financial analysis in essence. Alderman um, Florian, Florian. <laughs> um, what are they doing for us that our own staff cannot do? We have looked at uh, to try to balance out the, the various proposals that are coming in for the casino. And while we can examine what they say and look at how they do their uh, calculations and the rest of it, where we fall short is primarily in the analysis of the data that's presented. While they use, uh, the, they use a couple of different metrics that are similar to each other by the means by which they make their calculations, but we don't know, we can't test the validity of the underlying data itself. For that, you need a consultant that is familiar with the industry that can tell you whether you know, a, a casino in this location can produce 600 million, 800 million, whatever in the course of a year, whether those projections are reasonable given the demographics and the uh, ability of this particular site to draw. That's where the primary interest comes in. So we have a, I'm sorry, we have a committee that is, who's on that committee determining like who's gonna get the casino? Votes? Yeah, the bids, it's yeah. T Tina, me, Noel, Douglas, a couple other people have some input. But it's, you know, I mean, I'm a lawyer, not a, uh, not a financial analyst. Uh, Tina's a CPA, but she's got the, she's in the middle of the audit. I was only brought in after proposals were received, to be, to clarify that well, well, yeah. I'm not intimately involved in this process. And, that, and that's exactly right. You know, we're trying our best to fit in as much as we can, but we have, you know, we, and we have a pretty good bench in Waukegan, and it's just that we don't have that depth that really is required to understand and analyze this particular type of information. Isn't this all speculative though? I mean, are, how is anyone gonna be able to say we're gonna make this much money? We've never had six new casinos at once. We've never had 1,300 gaming sh machines already in Waukegan. I mean, there's so many variables here. How, how is paying $45,000 to someone else gonna make it any more clear than what you guys could come up with? Well, that's more of an argumentative point, but um, and you're certainly welcome to the point of view, but I think the answer to this is there's a reason why we charge $25,000 per proposal to submit. So we would have a bank of money that once we saw how many proposals were in and had a chance to at least look at them, we saw that each one of them was many thousands of pages long. We needed to bring somebody in that could analyze that much data. We have a bank of money with which to draw. So there's 150 came in, they're looking for 45 of it. Right, we'll but aren't we spending $500 on a, an hour on a lawyer for the other lawsuit related to the we casino? Are. How much have we spent on that so far? Do we About know? About $14,000. <laughs> okay. 
Any more questions on the motion? No, I do have Mr. Oh. Johnson here. If yeah, there's some reason you yeah. want to speak to him. You'd like to? Oh, I'm sorry. If, can I ask questions? Or do you want me to do it on the council floor? I'm fine either way. It's, it's fine. So I guess, Alderman Taylor, can you speak into the mic? Sure. The mic must be askew. Um, so I see you've represented a number of casinos and municipalities. So in all of that representation, now that you're working with these six bids, do you have any conflicts with any of those? Have you worked with those before? Are they a conflict of interest for you now? I have no conflicts of interest. I'm completely clean um, with respect to um, that. I have no relationships with any of the bidders. Okay. Um, one concern I have is what will this economic study, because I'm a, I've asked for an economic study, but one of my concerns is are we just doing it on the six casinos that we have, or are we doing it that um, is this casino even feasible in Waukegan? Does it make sense for us? Is it a good economic investment? Or is that not even one of the questions and we're just looking what's best out of these six casinos? Let me introduce myself real quick first. Okay. Charlie Johnson with Johnson Consulting, um, 6 East Monroe, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think the intent is for us to help make it, a, I'm an independent, third party, impartial analyst that specializes in hospitality and gaming. All right, so that's what I do. We also are very consistently, regularly asked to help vet uh, the bidding proposals. So I think it's important that we do have an industry overview and an assessment of what the market potential is, because that way it's going to help us gauge the, the merits of the various bidders. So if someone is X, and we think that the demand in the marketplace Thank is you. 2X, or half X, I think we have to have that capability to understand the veracity of the uh, bidder. And also we have our due diligence to do with respect to the hit, um, experience the groups have, uh, and also put together a, a, a score sheet that allows us to look at the various attributes of the proposals. It's the management team that's proposed um, solid is the uh, the sponsoring company solid, uh, and so our our job is to serve as your protector and independent analyst for this, and it's and what we specialize. So, in. would you even like tell us if there was a better use of land? Let's say that maybe, and I'm just put it, throwing this out. Say that a shopping mall or a apartment complex was maybe a better use. I mean, would you tell us that part of it? Or I guess what I want to make sure is that we're getting an overall perspective and not really just these six casinos. Well, um, I, <clears throat> from, from what I read, I think they were just reviewing the six proposals. Okay, that's kind of and that's it. That's the intention of us. Okay. We have not done a market study per se for what we call a highest and best use. Uh, I think when you do engage us, it's incumbent upon us to be as helpful and take advantage of all of our knowledge of other real estate. So if we see something that is very much amiss, um, we'll have our discussions with the committee and then we will certainly provide counsel to you in that regard. So because it's not a market study, will you be able to tell us um, what existing or what the estimates of additional police, fire, or city services may be needed, or um, loss of revenue by other gaming establishments. Will you be able to take that into consideration? Yes. I, it's not in our scope, Thank per you. se, to quantify the, the incremental costs. I don't know if that was one of the questions that was proposed, uh, proposed to the various gaming, because so, we haven't seen the responses yet. Okay. Uh, but I will once we get those, I will understand that. Um, so, you know, gaming does have certain consequences to um, the cost structure of a city at the same time. So we are we regularly do those kinds of quantification.
applications. Um, that per se, that specific is not in our um, analysis, but to the extent that there's a big variance between the six proposals and one has more consequences because of entries and things of that nature, we'll be able to discern that for sure. Yeah, because we have a large gaming, <coughs> video gaming um, number of machines out there now, and one of my concerns is if we, if we put a casino over here, are we going to drive out business owners over here? And yeah. that is something that I would like to see included in the study, and I don't know if that can be included because it's not a total market study. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, we would be pleased to think about that and have a, a, a paragraph or two, and we call that cannibalization, or it could work the other way. It could help bring more people to the area that would go video game. We don't know the answer to that right. yet. So and we have to do our work. That's one that I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, and I think, that, I think that's all of my questions right now. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Any more questions on the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Kirkwood? Aye. Alderman Rivera? No. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Motion carried. Um, reports and communication. Item A, quarterly travel. Oh, it's all yours. Okay. <laughs> um, earlier this fiscal year, we modified the travel policy um, and to eliminate the need to go to labor and relations committee for out-of-state travel. Um, so part of the, in order to try to maintain some strong internal controls, there was an addition to require a quarterly report of travel and entertainment reimbursements to the appropriate committee. So included in the packet are two different reports. One is just a, a report that we run out of our financial system. So I picked the um, travel, tuition reimbursement, conference of travel, tuition reimbursement, and training and schooling. So I picked that for the quarter for May 1st through the end of July. So that's the detailed line items for those. So if there's anything that anybody would like to see, we can always pull that. Um, if you see an individual's name, that's mean, that means they were reimbursed through payroll. Um, and if you see a vendor's name, for example, um, firefighters award luncheon, to the exchange, that means a check was issued to a vendor. Then also included was uh, Sean has been tracking all of the employee reimbursements, and that's on a separate report that's included with your packet as well. So you might see the same information on both, you might not. So say, for example, um, a police officer paid out of pocket to buy lunch for a bunch of kids at um, an event that wouldn't necessarily show up in travel or conference. That might show up in meals or other expenses. So that's why we did both reports. Um, so hopefully those reports are help, helpful for you and we'll be providing those on a quarterly basis. They are posted on board docs, so they're also publicly available as well. So if you have any questions on those, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, item B. Uh, the next report is also required by resolution that we report to uh, the committee any outstanding grants as well as we include, we're not required to, but we also include a listing of grants that are applied for, recently closed, or denied as well. Um, so this is through the end of August. Um, so we hope that we captured all the grants. Uh, Karen is here from the Finance Department. She tries to track all the grants. It's a little bit of herding cats. Um, the departments do a really nice job identifying grants and applying for grants, and then Karen hunts them down and makes sure that we have all the paperwork. Um, we do have a requirement now with the state of Illinois, they pass some legislation that not only do we have to report federal grant, grants back to the federal government, and that's part of our audit, but now there's also a state requirement that any state grants need to be audited and reported back to them as well. So that's what this report is. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. So if there's any questions on any of the grants, we can try to answer those for you or provide you additional documentation. Um, shall 
Shall I see. keep moving right Go on? ahead. Okay. Roll right through it, please. Um, the much awaited uh, yes. water rebate program will start next month. When we passed the changes to the city code, the entire chapter about water and sewer, um, we instituted rate increases and we also went from quarterly billing to monthly billing. Um, and those aldermen that were here at the time know that that did cause some issues, especially with seniors that received minimal billing. Um, so part of the way to mitigate that was to institute a rebate program um, that was much discussed. And I've asked Juan Garcia to come today and talk a little bit about it. He'll be the one charged with um, managing the program. So he included a memo as well as um, you know some calculations that will, our staff will be looking at the application. It'll all be available online. So Juan can do a summary if you want. Or I could just stay quiet as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or wait for the phone calls to come in. I do just want to make a note. Um, the document that kind of shows what they will get, we do have a rate increase that takes place in May. So the uh, calculations just reflect a sample of what it would be if it was the same. We'll adjust those for the staff. So when people do come in, they'll know, you know, before the May 1st increase and after the May 1st increase what that'll be. Uh, will we be sending out uh, further communication regarding this, like with the water bills? Um, only because I know that a uh, couple of weeks ago or mm -hmm. three weeks ago it was, um, it was announced, uh, but we didn't have details regarding the program. Yes, so the details are online already, and the uh, notice has already been changed in the bill, so it'll go all throughout now and uh, September. Okay, but, but for people that um, receive the bill, will there, will there be something in there communicating to them? We don't have a flyer that's included at the moment. It is just a notice that you see on the on the right hand side. But okay. Yeah, if we want to include a flyer, we can consider that. Okay. It, it is to include. It's printed right on the bill itself. There are additional costs to printing flyers. Correct. Mm -hmm. and stuffing oh no, I understand. It's just that um, when, uh, like I said, like three or four weeks ago, I I, I guess it was uh, printed on some of the bills at the program was being established, and then I started receiving calls regarding the program, oh, and okay, I don't yeah. think we had the details as of yet um, right so yeah the major detail that was really awaiting was just the application, application. portion of it yeah. um, being that the resolution kind of dictated what the cost would be what the minimum bills are you know the residents know we have had some people come in already asking about it so we have the applications now so we're happy to hand them out and they're also online okay all right thank we you we can discuss with the mayor about doing additional flyers yeah the communication it is only for homeowners though correct yes so Correct. we want to communicate and be transparent, but we don't. We also don't want to indicate. There's no way for us to pull out just those bills that would be applicable to. Okay. We, ma we mass mail through a printing service, but I can discuss that with the mayor. Correct. But I think we did a news flash as well, right? We did, and it's up online. And I do believe, at least internally, what we looked at as far as minimum billing was about a thousand, thousand plus customers, and overall we have twenty plus thousand accounts. So to include a flyer to kind of just though. Oh, no, I understand. Difficult. Yeah, it's yeah. not cost effective. I, you know, I just want to prepare myself for the oh, phone yo, calls. Oh, not a problem. You can also <laughs> call me Monday through Friday. Good. You can, to Friday. Again, you can call Juan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we, we were going to check into trying to get in front of um, some of the seniors at Park Place and then Correct. reach out to Warren Township as well um, and see if they have like a similar senior Kind of newsletters or that we yeah. can at least print out and leave applications are these in online they are packet? online mm -hmm. and there's an application included in your information here online okay. with the agenda and i'm going to make some copies and give to those in my ward that have questioned um with, had questions regarding the water bill setting that up in the, in the first place so i'll be handing those out to them because some of them don't have access to computers so um, I'll be ready to just hand them out to them. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm assuming it will just be a, a credit on the bill, not to be handed out checks. Correct. That's no. correct. We're do credits on the bill. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I figured that just so the patrons questions, you're not getting a check, you're getting a credit on your bill. Right, and it has to be an account of good standing. Right. You have to have one of the exemptions from the county. Correct. You have to have documentation that you have that exemption right. from the county. So if you don't have the exemption from the county, we're not going to determine if you're a senior or, right. you know, we don't make those determinations. Correct. So. And then also, 
you have to submit between September 1st and September 30th. That's it. Correct. You only have one month to submit. So we got to really get this information out quickly. So we don't automatically give you that? No. But we don't know what your status is on your property with the county, what your exemptions are. Yeah, homestead and all that. Um, veterans, senior freeze, and all of that, which the county has that information. Have we ever been able to fix the billing period, making it a little bit longer for people to get their bill and pay it? We're in compliance with the ordinance, so I don't, I don't know that there's something to fix per se. We're, we're billing in compliance with what was codified. And as we've discussed before, you know, if the city council would like to undertake modifying the city code to go to a longer period from read to bill, then we would accommodate that. What are we at now? 15 days. And it would was it be, 21. Would days. it be difficult to do 25 days or 30? Would it make uh, it's a or monthly, 25? It's a monthly billing process. So then you would end up with usage into the next month. month into the next month and then you might have customers paying the statement balance instead of the current charges would end up with a credit balance but we will accommodate whatever the direction is by city council i think it needs to be a little longer because by the time it goes out and the people get it and mail it back there have been all of us have received complaints from residents that it's just too quick as as we have as well right <laughs> right we get the calls as well. i don't i don't right. know what the magic number is but i think right now we're pushing it really close if we could even extend it for one or two days how does like the electric company or the gas company do it because that's a monthly thing and they're you always get 30 they're, days. you're all behind you're paying behind yeah you're right. not paying your current you're paying what you used already so that's why you have a longer period to and pay we couldn't go to something like that they, some of them also do estimated billing which we do not do we do the yeah. actual meter reads again it was 21 days it went to 15 um, it is, we are complying with city code. We do have e-bill where you can receive your bill the day it's generated via email. We have where you can automatically pay, you can pay online, you can pay by phone, you can drop off. So we've tried to accommodate that. But if the committee would like to make a referral to whichever committee now does code changes, code revisions, appeals, and negotiations, okay. then you know perhaps that that committee could take up considering making those changes. Um, I, and, and sometimes I don't think it's um, it's necessarily the billing period. I think it's just the uh, the company that's handling the billing and their timeliness um, for getting the bills out. Or the postmaster. I, right. I, I, we do get notified when the bills are produced and when they are mailed. So okay. We have so, done some debunking with customers when okay. they call. Okay. Um, you know, and we've said it was dropped at the main post office on this day, which was the day it was printed or the day after it was printed. Um, so, so we you know, feel pretty comfortable for people to hear that you're depending yeah. on the U.S. mail delivery service. But but we're pretty comfortable that they're compliant. Yes. And okay. if there is a situation where there is a delay, then mm -hmm. we go in and we manually waive late fees for that entire cycle. Gotcha. Perfect. All of them were very aware of this. And I looked into this, uh, I oversaw the project of going from quarterly billing to uh, monthly billing. And one of the biggest things is the compliance of the bills being sent out. The big, next biggest problem is not all checks come directly to us. A direct transfer would be uh, okay, that you uh, sign up for bill payment. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want, you want whoever your, your, your banking service is to write a check. So when does the guy when does the guy get notice to to uh, to that? The night before. So the night before, they they go to the service. The service generates a check. The check's put in the mail. We receive the check. And they're passed through. Several people understand that process. Okay, they're actually generating a check. This won't totally change until we get into total ACH transfer. So we go directly from their checkbook to our checkbook. We are now starting to do that with our vendors on the way out. Right? We are looking for the opportunity and the chance when that's going to be that will be reversed uh, through 
most banking situations. So you'll pump in your, your information, bingo, right that night, that money will go right from there to us. We'll, we'll get it recorded the next day. So there's another system coming, but it's not here now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Roll right on through. Okay. Uh, the next is the water consumption summary that we include every month. Um, for the month of July, we had 1.18 million in a revenue bill. Um, the business license and rental uh, applications made during the month of July are also included in your packet as well. So if there's any questions on any of those, we'd be happy to answer those. Um, and then everyone's favorite report is the gaming report. June and July are included in here. These are available on the state's website as well. We just go ahead and run them just for Waukegan um, and include them in this packet. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, just to clarify a little bit around this. So there's about 1,300 machines already in Waukegan. Is that true? Is that the correct number? I, the, according to the report from the state for July, and again, I'm, I'm not the gaming board, but there's 54 establishments that have the, the machines and they have the video game count at 265. 263. Only 265, 263. that's according to this report from the state. 265. Well, I don't know why I thought it was a lot more than that. Okay, and our share of the revenue is $94,877 for whatever month this month. is, July. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so there's 90, approximately $94,000, $95,000 a month revenue from the machine. Right, we, okay. we seem to be right around under 100000 right around $95,000 a month in tax revenue. Okay. All right. Chair, and where is that money allocated to? It is split between the police and fire pension fund. Uh, the next report is um, a report that's not publicly available but is provided to the committee and this is our food and beverage and hotel tax report uh, through July. We've done a little bit of uh, reorganization in the finance department and um, we now have two staff accountants that are working with Juan in our revenue collection division and we have dedicated um, Itzel and probably Draca to focus on business licensing, um, rental licensing, working with the clerk's office on liquor and gaming licensing, and then also really focusing on the food and beverage and hotel tax collection. Um, we started meeting with Douglas Durango from Corp Council's office to take a look at our ordinance and try to strengthen um, our compliance. In regards to this, we send a lot of strongly worded letters, um, but as you can see, we have uh, some restaurants here that continue to not file. Um, so, you know, our ordinance isn't very strong as far as being able to revoke a license. Um, we can refuse to renew, I suppose, when it's due, um, but this is an area that we plan to, over the next 30 to 120 days, really work internally, get our processes up to date, um, really kind of, and we're also going to start pulling any late fees or past due balances so that it shows up when you pull up the customer's water account. You'll also see if there are errors <laughs> on things like this. So uh, we're hoping in the next three months maybe to bring back some proposed code revisions to really oh, strengthen our compliance abilities in this regard. I have a question. Um, looking at this list, is there a way that we can tell who pays quarterly and who's supposed to be paying monthly? Yes. Okay. Almost no one pays quarterly. <laughs> there's very, very few that pay quarterly. In order to So pay, everyone is supposed to be paying monthly? Well no, there's small ones and they're okay. in blue. Okay, uh, those are so ones are quarterly. The ones. So if you're small enough that you're supposed to be filing quarterly, that means the state of Illinois has allowed you to file your sale, sales tax quarterly. We don't make that determination. Uh -huh. Okay. So if the state says you can file quarterly or annually, then we do the same. Starting what, January, February, March? 
April, May, June. Um, I'm not How sure if it? it's a rolling quarter or if it's a state fiscal year or a calendar. I'm, I'm not sure. It's probably it's a state. March, June. It's probably a state October, fiscal yeah. year, actually. Because I, I think we filed quarterly for my business. So we it's don't not, have that. We have a handful. Those it's aren't not the like, ones that we're so worried about. It's more the ones that we know are supposed to be filing monthly that continue to not do that. So April, June, September. If there's three zeros in a row, though, then they haven't filed quarterly yet. <laughs> oh, okay. And we do have, I think we might, they might have closed. We had one annual filer for a while. Oh, we have two. Oh, that's the purple. Yeah, we have okay. a couple of those. Okay. Okay. Um, stabilization fund is next. Uh, we continue to uh, be in compliance with our resolution. Our minimum balance requirement is $6.68 million. Um, and our, uh, we meet that. Our balance is $8.69 million. So we have $2 million in excess of the restricted minimum. Okay. And then finally is the budget to actual report through the end of July. Next month, in the September uh, Finance and Purchasing Committee, we will be doing a quarterly review of the general fund and the water fund, and we'll probably include some updates on the spending of bond money that will be a little more high level and have more multi-year trending. Um, but some things, a couple of important things to note, one is that this report uh, does not include, this is cash basis and actual to date. So it does not include um, any salary increases that will result um, once the IFF, the SEIU, and the two MAP, uh, MAP contracts are resolved. Um, so as far as the salaries, especially in the fire department, those are looking really good from a budget to actual perspective, but just bear in mind that once those contracts are resolved and we do a retro pay, then we'll have a cumulative increase in that those line items there. But again, we'll have a quarterly overview of the two large funds for you in the next committee packet for the first quarter. All righty. Is that it? All right. Thank you, Finance. I take a motion by Alderman Moisio. Second. Second by Alderman Kirkwood to adjourn. The time is now 6.03. PM. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried.